we have here the five criteria that may be used in solving the decision making under uncertainty. For the first one, we have the maximax criterion. When we say maximax criterion, this is actually a very optimistic criterion that chooses the best decision in manner of the best of the best. So what is the best among the best choices? That's why it is called maximax. What is the maximum of all the maximum? Max of max, maximax. Okay, so I hope this is clear with you. For the second one, this is actually called maximin. Or this is for pessimistic type of decision making. This actually choose the best of the worst. Among all of those worst case scenario, what is the best uh, solution that we can choose. No, you, that is the maximin or tinatawag natin na max of min. What is the maximum of all those minimum? Again, maximin for pessimistic, this chooses the best of the worst decision. everyone how are you doing i hope you are all doing well so for this presentation we will going to have our discussion regarding the decision theory and especially our first model under this topic decision theory which is the decision making under uncertainty which tackles the different criterions which are the maximax maximin four weeks laplast and minimax regret okay so let's start our discussion first of all what is decision theory so when we say decision theory this is actually a body of knowledge and related analytical techniques of different degrees of formality designed to help a decision maker choose among a set of alternatives in light of their possible consequences. So basically, this is just a decision making but is more on a scientific way of having your final decision. We have here our assumptions in decision theory. So for the first assumption, we are also assuming that decision maker uses logic, of course. The second assumption is that the decision maker considers all available information that is present to them right now on their decision-making process. For the third assumption, the decision-maker considers all possible alternatives of actions that they can do during their decision-making process. So we have here our different models of decision theory. So this is actually four models. The first model is the decision-making under uncertainty. Second one is the decision-making under risk. Third one is the marginal analysis with discrete distribution. And the fourth one is the marginal analysis with normal distribution. So I hope you are all clear with your statistics because on the third and the fourth model, we will going to have some statistics side of things. Okay? Anyway, for this presentation, what we will going to discuss it's, is only the first model of decision theory, which is the decision making under uncertainty. Okay. So, model number one, again, decision-making under uncertainty. So, when, when we say uncertainty, actually, this is the assumptions of the future that is not yet known. The future is uncertain, meaning you are you don't know if, it, if the future will be favorable, unfavorable with you. So, decision-making is uncertain if the future is unpredictable, just like what it says here on our PowerPoint presentation. So this model actually satisfies the following condition. First condition of this model is that the payoff for each alternative is known. So given the payoff in every consequences, in every uh, type of market, for the second is that there are a few states of nature. Third model that, that this satisfies is actually the probability of occurrence of each state of nature is unknown. Okay, so we have here the five criteria 
that may be used in solving the decision making under uncertainty. For the first one, we have the maximax criterion. When we say maximax criterion, this is actually a very optimistic criterion that chooses the best decision in manner of the best of the best. So what is the best among the best choices? That's why it is called maximax. What is the maximum of all the maximum? Max of max. Maximax. Okay, so I hope this is clear with you. For the second one, this is actually called maximin. Or this is for pessimistic type of decision making. This actually choose the best of the worst. Among all of those worst case scenario, what is the best uh, solution that we can choose? No, that is the maximin. Or tinatawag natin na max of mean. What is the maximum of all those minimum? Again, maximin for pessimistic, this chooses the best of the worst decisions. Okay? For the third criteria, we have the Horwick's criterion of realism. Here, in Horwick's criterion of realism, it is actually a criterion of decision-making under uncertainty that balances the weight between the optimism side and the pessimism side. So, the optimistic and pessimistic side is actually balances using the alpha level or what we call the criterion of realism. So here we have the percentage of occurring the optimistic side of things and also the percentage of occurring the pessimistic side of things. Okay, so for the fourth criteria, we have the Laplace or equally likely or the Laplace actually in solving Laplace, we have here the equal weights of all the possible outcomes. Okay, for the last one, we have here the minimax regret. So when we say minimax regret, this actually minimizes the maximum regret. So don't get confused, guys, within uh, between maxim maximin and minimax. That that is actually two different things. When we say minimax regret, this ma minimizes the maximum regret. So ayaw natin na magregret doon sa decision natin. That's why we are trying to minimize our maximum regret. So mini max. What is the minimum of all those maximum regret? That is the meaning of this fifth criteria or basically pwede niyo tong tandaan as the avoidance of regret. We don't want to regret something sooner or later after our decision. Okay, so this is the five different criterion that is used in decision making under uncertainty. Let's start with the first one. Let's have, by the way, let's have our example problem. So I have here an example. So for our company right now is Nestle. We will go to discuss all about Nestle. This is just the first example because on our next topic, the model 2, the decision making under risk, our example there is also Nestle. So that is the Nestle part 2. <laughs> anyway, so we have here our first example. Mary is the market analyst of Nestle. And she is asked to present an expansion plan for the company to the senior managers, which is either to construct a plant, that is the first option, open a distribution center, that is the second option, or do nothing, third option. She was able to determine the expected payoff depending on the decision and the type of market. As we have said before, this is actually one of the characteristics of decision-making under uncertainty wherein the expected payoff is actually uh, given, is already determined, which may be favorable, average, or unfavorable to the business. So this favorable, average, and unfavorable, these are the type of market that can happen sooner or later because again the market right now is uncertain now if the decision is to construct a plant the company will gain eight thousand dollars if the market turns out to be favorable 
it will they will lose one thousand dollars if the market turns out to be average, and they will lose five thousand dollars if the market turns out to be unfavorable for the business. Okay, so if the decision is to open a distribution center, the company will gain four thousand dollars if the market turns out to be favorable. Gain two thousand dollars if the market turns out to be average, and lost three thousand dollars if the market turns out to be unfavorable. Now, if the decision is to do nothing, the company will gain nothing, whether the market turns out to be favorable, average, or unfavorable. So sorry for the typographical error. This is or unfavorable. So they will gain nothing because they do nothing. <laughs> and anyway, so the figures are summarized on the next slide. So Mary noted that the decision of each manager is of course affected by their personality, by their way of thinking, by their mindset, of course, because the reality is we can actually have our decision purely technically, purely based on numbers. In reality, we have actually emotions. We have our psychological factors that are affecting our decision making, and we are incurring those factors right here, right now, on operations research too. Now, she described each manager as follows. So they have actually five managers there in Nestle that is engaged in the decision making of this specific problem of them. So for the first manager that is Edward is an optimistic person. So Edward is very optimistic, while Agnes is very conservative. So when we say he's very conservative, somehow this is pessimistic type of person. Then the third one, the third manager is William. So William thinks there is a seventy-five chance that the market is favorable. So somehow. William is a for me. William is technical thinker because he actually have his percentage on his mind wherein the market is favorable, seventy five percent favorable for them, twenty five percent unfavorable. So that is for William. Now for Jane, Jane actually thinks that each type of market has an equal chance of occurring. So for Jane, the future. Which is uncertain has equal chances of occurring, whether favorable, average, or unfavorable. For the fifth one, Joel does not want to regret making a wrong decision. So this Joel, the fifth manager of the nest day, this is actually the one who wanted to avoid having regret. Sooner or later, after he or after she actually makes the decision, so what would be the decision of each manager? This is the big question here. Given the fact na magkakaiba sila ng mga characteristics, ng personality, ng emotions, ng psychological factors behind, what is the decision? What would be the decision of each of these five managers, and how much? Gain or loss for the company would each expect from each of those decisions, and which alternative is most likely to be chosen by most managers? So the goal here is, pwede kasi magkakaiba sila ng decision, pero ang goal natin dito is to work as one, to work as one company with one decision. So ayon yung tatray natin na hanapin dito sa problem na to na common sa karamihan sa kanila. Okay? So, let's start. Okay, so, by the way, before starting, here is the payoff summary. The numbers here is actually the one written in this problem statement. So, tinurn ko lang into a tabular form. So, the payoff summary here, we have three types of market here. Favorable, average and unfavorable. Now the expansion plan again is to construct a plant, open a distribution center, do nothing. And these are the three possible decisions. First decision: construct a plant. Second: open a distribution center. Third is to do nothing. So here they are the numbers: eight, negative one, negative five. 
4, 2, negative 3, 0, 0, and 0. These are all in $1,000. So, this means $8,000, negative $1,000, negative $5,000, and so on. So, as you can see here, we have the criterion of realism, which is 0 0.75. So, this criterion of realism that is equals to 0 0.75 is actually the percentage of the chances that the market is favorable that William actually thinks on their future, okay? So, that is the, in the decimal form, 0 0.75. More likely, this will be used for the whole week's criterion later, okay? So, let's start our solution. First solution... Let's use the Maximax criterion. So as you can see on our list of the managers, Edward is an optimistic person. Meaning to say, since Edward is an optimistic person, we can actually use the Maximax criterion for Edward. Okay, I hope you get it, guys. So let's have here our definition again of the maximax criterion when we say maximax criterion this chooses the best of the best so we used as basis in choosing an alternative for decision makers who are optimistic just like edward so here our manager is edward because he is the one who is very optimistic on their future on nestle so we have here the payoff summary, same uh, numbers on our given. So, how do we do the Maximax criterion? Actually, it is very basic. Let's have my pen. Let's have color black. So, it is actually very basic, guys. Let's just have the maximum per choices. Okay, so what are the choices again? Construct a plant, open a distribution center, or do nothing so in constructing a plant if market turns favorable for us we will have or we will gain eight thousand dollars if the market turns just to be an average we will lose one thousand dollars or if the market turns to be unfavorable just like uh, right now we are facing pandemic and your decision is to construct a plant so more likely it will not be favorable for you if that is the case you will be incurring a loss of negative five thousand so in maximax criterion it is very basic what is the maximum between these three numbers within these three numbers so basically the maximum is eight Okay, now, in opening a distribution center, if market turns favorable for us, we will have 4,000, 2,000 if the market turns just an average, and if the market turns negatively or unfavorable for us, we will be having a loss of $3,000. So, what is the ma maximum within these numbers? Basically, this is 4. And since doing nothing doesn't have any pay off for favorable average and unfavorable we will be having here zero so this is the first max uh, so this is the max now the question is what is the max of those maxes so what is the max bit within this three number so eight four zero so basically max is eight meaning to say what will be the decision of Edward right now is, of course, to construct a plant because that is where the max C max is. Okay, so let's write here the decision for Edward. Construct a plant. And expect eight thousand dollars pay of hopes okay so this will be our decision to construct a plant and expect eight thousand dollars pay off only for maximax criterion or for edward 
as the first manager. Okay? So, for the second one, Maximin Criterion. So, Maximin Criterion used as basis in choosing an alternative for decision makers who are conservative. We're in the one that is conservative in our list of managers is Agnes. Agnes is a conservative one or a somehow pessimistic uh, type of person. So, for this type of person, Maximin criterion is used. So, we have here the payoff summary for Agnes. Same input. So, how do we do the Maximin criterion? Basically, it is just almost the same with the Maximax. But the only difference here is that this time, we will go in to choose the minimum per row. Okay, so the minimum within 8, negative 1 and negative 5 is of course negative 5. So the minimum for our second row is negative 3. And of course, there, there is no minimum here on do nothing. So let's write here 0. Now, that is the mean. The question is, what is the max? Of all those mean. What is the max of all those mean? Negative 5, negative 3, and 0. So basically, the highest number among these three numbers is 0. So meaning to say, our decision for Agnes, Agnes decision rather, will be to do nothing. Okay? Because she is a conservative type of person. So let's write here, Decision for Agnes, do nothing. Do nothing and expects no payoff. Okay, so this will be the decision of Agnes. Okay, so next criterion that we will go into discuss is the whole week's criterion. Okay, so for the Hurwitz criterion, this is actually used as basis in choosing an alternative for decision makers who have a subjective assessment of the chance that a market is favorable, just like William. You know, he actually thinks that 75% chance that the market is favorable. So, this whole week's criterion will be used for William. Okay, so before we solve the whole week's criterion, we are we will be using a formula here for whole weeks. So the formula is alpha multiplied to p sub f plus the one minus alpha multiplied to p sub u. We're in p sub f is the payoff if the market is favorable for us. And P sub U is the payoff if the market is unfavorable for us. And the third variable, the alpha, this is the probability that the market is favorable or meaning to say this is actually the 75% chance that William is thinking. Because he says here that it is actually the chance that the market is favorable for them. So alpha is uh, 0 0.75. This is actually the criterion of realism. Okay? So, last variable, 1 minus alpha, this is the probability that the market is unfavorable. This is just the reciprocal of the alpha, 1 minus alpha. Okay? So, we have here our payoff summary table for whole weeks, for William, rather, as the manager. Same input, but this time, we will go into compute the Horwick's value for each of the row for constructing a plant, for opening a distribution center, and for doing nothing. Okay? Using the formula stated on the previous slide, which is this one. Okay? So, let's start our computation. Let's have our blank uh, slide here. Let's just rewrite first our formula. So, whole weeks equals alpha P sub F plus 1 minus alpha multiplied to P sub U. Now, 
for the first one for construct a plant so construct a plant let's write here uh huh 0 0.75 and the probability if the market turns favorable for us or the payoff rather if the market is favorable for us and what is that payoff that is 8 so we will be using 8 negative 1 and negative 5 or 8 and negative 5 because we don't have average for the whole weeks formula so 8 negative 5 for construct a plant 4 and 3 for opening a distribution center 0 and 0 for doing nothing okay so 8 and negative 5 let's write here 8 plus here we have negative 5 so 1 minus alpha or basically 1 minus 0 0.75 so this basically is 0 0.25 now, by just simply uh, directly input this on your calculator, I have here my go-to calculator, <laughs> 0 0.75 times 8 plus 0 0.25 times, what we call this, times negative 5. So it's zero point twenty five times negative five. Okay, so the answer is four point seventy five for constructing a plant. Okay, let's write it here: four point seventy five. Okay. So next for opening a distribution center, open a distribution center. So, 0 0.75 plus 0 0.25. So, let's go back to our table. 4 and negative 3 for opening a distribution center. So, let's write here 4 and negative 3. So, let's compute again. Zero point seventy five times four plus zero point twenty five times negative three. So basically, the answer is two point twenty five. So let's write it here. Two point twenty five. Okay. So for do nothing decision, this is zero point seventy five times 0 plus 0 0.25 times 0. So basically, any number multiplies to 0, basic mathematical law, ba all numbers multiplied to 0 is equals to 0. So let's have here now our final value for full weeks, which are 4.75, 2.25, and 0. Let's write them here have color black ink so 4.75 2.25 and 0 now we will going to have our maximum value of whole weeks which is 4.75 so let's write here 4.75 meaning to say the decision of William will be to construct a plant Okay, so let's write the decision of William here on this side. So, William decisions will be to construct a plant and expect a payoff of
$4,750. So again, all numbers here are in $1,000. So that will be the decision for William. I hope you get it, guys. So for our fourth criterion, let's have here the Laplace criterion. So Laplace criterion, this is used as basis in choosing an alternative for decision makers who thinks that all outcomes have an equal chances of occurring. Just like what the fourth manager is thinking, which is Jane. She is actually thinking that each type of market has an equal chance of occurring. Again, what are those type of market? Favorable, unfavorable, or average. So let's try to solve this Laplace criterion. So I have here the payoff summary table and the manager now is Jane. Same, same, uh, what call this? Same input, just like before. So for the Laplace, since we are assuming that the market, all of the market have equally likely or equal chances of happening, what we will go into do here is to just have the average of all those numbers per row or per decision. So for the first one, let's have the average for constructing a plant. So let's write here 8 plus negative 1 uh, plus negative 5 divided by 3. So average is 0 0.67. That's how easy is the Laplace. Okay, so let's write here 0 0.67. Okay, so for opening a distribution center, let's write here 4 plus 2 plus negative 3. So divided by 3, of course, for the average. So answer is 1. So let's write it here, 1. Okay, so for average of all those three, 0 plus 0, all those 0. 0 plus 0 plus 0 divided by 3 is, of course, 0. Now, in Laplace transform, sorry, in Laplace criterion, we will go in to choose the maximum among all of the, these three numbers. So basically, that is 1. So meaning to say, the decision of Jane will be to open a distribution center. So let's type the decision of Jane here on the side. So Jane's decision would be to open a distribution center and expect A payoff. This is why of one thousand dollars. Again, guys, all numbers here are in thousand dollars of one thousand dollars. So this will be the result of Jane's decision. I hope that is clear with you. So next we have now the minimax regret criterion again. Uh, let's recall the definition of the minimax regret criterion. This is the minimum of all the maximum regret. Because here we are trying to avoid having some regret after our decision. Okay, that is why it is called minimax regret criterion. This is used as basis in choosing an alternative for decision makers who wants to minimize this uh the mini to minimize opportunity losses so those are the regrets okay so for the steps on having the minimax regret criterion first we should determine the maximum payoff per column and secondly we should determine the opportunity loss wherein opportunity loss is equals to the maximum payoff this is actually determined on the first step here, determine the maximum payoff per column. 
minus the payoff, the original payoff on our original tableau, on our original payoff summary matrix. Okay, so let's have our first step first, which is to determine the maximum payoff per column. Okay, so we have here the payoff summary and the manager now is Joel. So basically, we will go to determine the maximum payoff per column, not per row. Take note guys, for the minimax, that will be per column and not per row. So for the favorable market, if the market turns to be favorable for us, the maximum is number 8. So let's type here 8. For the average type of market, the maximum here, negative 1, 2, and 0 is of course 2. Here, the market, if the market turns out to be unfavorable for us, the maximum is negative 5, negative 3, 0. So basically 0. So we have 8, 2, and 0 as our maximum values. Now, that is the first step. Second step is the having the opportunity lost table. So, how how we will do this? Basically, we will just minus based on our formula. Opportunity loss is just the maximum payoff, which are the 8, 2, and 0, minus the original payoff on our table. So, this is the original one. So, meaning to say, for the first, we have here 8, and the maximum is 8. So, let's type here, 8 minus 8. So, basically, this will be 8. Okay, so next, we have here 4. So, the maximum is 8. 8 minus 4. Let's write it here. 8 minus 4. This will be 4. Okay? So, for do nothing, that is 0. Maximum is 8. So, meaning 8 minus 0. So, let's write here 8 minus 0. Basically, this is 8. Okay, for the average, we have negative 1 here and the maximum is 2. So, 2 minus negative 1. So, 2 minus negative 1, this will be positive 3. Next, in opening a distribution center, we have 2 and the maximum is 2. So, 2 minus 2 will be 0. So, next, we have here 0. Maximum is 2. 2 minus 0. So, 2 minus 0. This will be 2. So, next, for our unfavorable, we have negative 5 here and the maximum is 0. So, meaning to say... Maximum minus payoff, 0 minus negative 5. So, 0 minus negative 5. This will be positive 5. Okay, so I hope you don't have any problem with adding of integers, positive and negative integers. So, we have here negative 3 and 0 as the maximum. So, 0 minus negative 3. So, 0 minus negative 3. Okay. Next, we have 0. And maximum is 0. So, 0 minus 0. Basically, this will be 0. Okay, now. Since this is the minimax regret criterion, what we will going to do now is to find the max. This is the regret table, eh. The opportunity loss, this is the regret. So, these are the regret. What are the maximum between this regret per decision? So, 8, 3, and 5. Uh, rather... Ah, uh, sorry, sorry, sorry. This should be 0. <laughs> 8 minus 8 is 0. So, we have here 0, 3, and 5. So, basically, this is 5. Okay, and for the opening a distribution center, 4, 0, and 3, maximum is 4. So here in do nothing, 8, 2, and 0, maximum is 8. So this is the max regret. Now, among all of this max regret, 5, 4, and 8, what is the minimum? So basically, the minimum is 
for. So, meaning to say, what will be the decision of Joel as one of the managers of Nestle is to open a distribution center. So, let's write on the side the decision of Joel. Decision will be to open a distribution center and expects a payoff of $4,000. Again, all numbers here are in thousand dollars. Okay, so we are done with all of the five different criterion used in decision making under uncertainty. So we have here our summary. As you can, let's, let's just have some short recap. For Maximax criterion, decision is to construct a plant. So one point for constructing a plant. For maximum criterion, decision is to do nothing. So one point for do nothing. For the whole weeks criterion, constructing a plant again. So one point again for constructing a plant. For Laplace, open a distribution center. So one point for open a distribution center. And for Minimax Regret, open a distribution center. That is why we have here our summary. For constructing a plant, the number of managers that come up with that decision is two managers. Same with opening a distribution center. And for doing nothing, one. And that one is actually doing nothing. Here, that is actually Agnes. So Agnes says she should do nothing and expects no pay off. So, anong gagawin natin kapag ganyan ang nangyari? You know, we can decide because nagtabla eh. You know, the decision is tied between constructing a plant and opening a distribution center. So, actually, we have two choices kapag ganyan yung nangyari. You know, unang choices, pwede natin kausapin si Agnes bakit siya naging pessimistic. No? So, baka pwedeng gawa ng paraan para meron siyang mapili na 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 criterion among those five or yung second, ito yung mas viable na gawin natin na decision dahil hindi mo naman kasi pwedeng palitan yung personality ng isang tao. No? Hindi mo naman pwedeng sabihin, hindi, don't be pessimistic, wag kang maging pessimistic. Eh, ganun nga kasi siya by nature and he is she is actually one of the managers. So, bakit mo papalitan yung characteristics niya? So, ang pwede natin gawin dyan, kapag ganyan nang nangyari, is that, uh, let's have here, we will going to void the decision of doing nothing. Now, what we will going to do is, tatanggalin natin itong do nothing, hindi siya pwedeng mag do nothing, just to break the tie, no, just to break the tie, walang do nothing na choices, sa payoff summary table niya. Wala yan. So, this will be deleted. And, if wala to, ang magiging choices niya na lang is of course, constructing a plant and opening a distribution center. And sabi dito, maximin. So, these two, ayan na yung minimum. Ang tanong, ano yung maximum sa dalawang minimum na to? So, basically, the answer is will be not anymore zero, magiging negative na, or opening a distribution center. So, if if that is the case lang, no, case to case basis na ito, and more likely, naging subjective tayo dito. And that is really the decision theory, technical plus fundamental side. So, plus one tayo sa opening a distribution center. So, plus one here, minus one here, this will be zero, this will still be two, and this will be three. So, since mas marami na ngayon si 3, the Nestle decision as a whole, the company's decision as a whole, is to open up a distribution center. Okay? So, I hope that is all clear with you. That actually sums up our first part or our first model 
of the decision theory which is the decision making under uncertainty again the five criterions are the maximum maximum full weeks laplace and minimax regret don't forget this guys this is actually lumalabas sa cie examination okay so we still have three models left and that will be our discussion on our next presentation so i hope you learned something from this discussion keep safe always and see you on our next presentation bye bye and enjoy the rest of the day